Well, last week, a transgender, um, so, so-called so transgender person um, who was actually female, assaulted Christian children in a Christian school for the reason that they, that they were Christian. And in response, Joy Reid had a quote-unquote transgender person on her show to say that uh, this man said, God made me in her image. He made uh, she made me transgender. We're going to talk about all of that today and the uh, the push for um, violence against Christians as sanctioned by the media. The media is on board and totally okay with violence against Christians and is saying that, you know, that even when transgender people commit violence against Christians, it's a Christian's fault and uh, it's totally cool. We should have a transgender day of vengeance. Um, this is all taking place really, actually happening right now. Yes, it feels like the book of Revelation. No, I don't think it actually is, but your theology might be a little different on eschatology. Um, however, it certainly does seem to fit, doesn't it? Um, I'm Pastor Josh Barnes. This is The Point of View. Thanks for joining us today. This is Justin Barnes and Jonathan Barnes in that order. Um, and uh, today, this is the show where we're unashamed to look at political, social, cultural, and theological issues from a biblical worldview. We do that because Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. He said the Bible is true. That means you can't be right about issues if you disagree with the Bible about those issues. Period. You can call yourself a Christian, but you're wrong. If you disagree with Christ, who said that the Bible is true. If you disagree with the Bible, you're not a you're not taking a Christian perspective. Period. End of conversation. Let me just put this out there before we dive in here. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9 doesn't just say that, it, that homosexuals, homosexuality is a sin for which people are sent to hell. It also says that if the effeminate, that means a man who acts like a woman, is a sin for which people are sent to hell. This is absolutely sinful behavior according to the Bible, right? If I say it's sinful behavior, who cares? If the Bible says it's sinful behavior, now we should care or else stop calling yourself a Christian. We're going to talk about someone, a, a man who calls himself a woman and says, I'm a Christian today. Um, before we do that, let's let's just real quick recap. You guys, what, what were your thoughts? What are, what are your initial thoughts on this school shooting? This female who calls herself a man or called him herself a man. Uh, who went in to a Christian school on purpose to kill as many people as she possibly could, and today she is no longer in existence. She's dead, um, which seems like perfect justice. What, what are your thoughts? I'll let Jonathan go first because I talk too much. Um, <laughs> sure. So uh, obviously, uh, first of all, um, uh, the, our, our thoughts and prayers and, you know, our, our, our deepest condolences are with the family. Um, that's the first thing that hits you every time one of these terrible things happens. Um, having four kids myself, I can't imagine. I mean, three of these victims were, you know, two of them, I think were nine and one of them eight, um, along with the three um, staff members that, you know, had their lives taken. So that, um, obviously a terrible tragedy. I can't imagine what the families are dealing with right now. Um, just, just not, not a good situation in any way, shape or form. But like you said, the, the, the response of the media and several key players here has been just diabolical. Um, the press secretary for the governor of Arizona, I guess she just resigned recently over what she posted right afterwards. And I mean, it's just, it, it took, <laughs> took a while it was it's just been it's just been crazy i mean she, she posted this this picture of um uh, of someone holding guns and saying this is what we do to transphobes hours after the shooting um and it took days for her to be you know resigned i don't i doubt she resigned on her own um but she was resigned and um this is something that just seems okay um and in any other context, if this was reversed, or even if it wasn't fully reversed, if it was just, you know, one group of people and another group of people, um, there's no way we'd be having this conversation. But for some reason, violence against Christians, or, or really violence by trans people, so-called trans people, in any way, shape, or form, is is quickly justified 
by a lot of people. And I, I, it just, I mean, it makes sense, but it, it's terrible that it does. Yeah. The, I think true, true colors are being shown, aren't they? I mean, when, when, if, if a, if a, a quote unquote Christian person, they're clearly not Christian if they do this. Um, but when a quote unquote Christian person or, or, um, you know, a non LGBTQ person goes into a nightclub and shoots up, uh, the nightclub, the first thing that we say is that's wrong. Like that is sinful. Like that's murder. It doesn't matter how sinful they are. You don't murder them, right? That's not what we do. It, this is completely unbiblical. But on the flip side, when a transgender person goes into a Christian school to kill children, the first thing their side said is, see, see what you've made us do. You killed your own children by disagreeing with us about the re the nature of reality. Justin? Yeah, so there there's a couple things that were my takeaways on this one. Number one, just utter disgust. Um, obviously, what happened, the act of pure evil, just if you want a, a picture of depravity, there it is. But... Um, also discussed in that I follow, I try to follow people from various different perspectives on, on Twitter. Um, so I follow like Cenk Uyghur of the Young Turks and Anna Kasparian and, and people on the left. Um, I follow Joe Biden, Barack Obama, and I follow a lot of people on the right as well. And there was a very disturbing theme of both sides jumping to immediately get their talking points out on this. Um, before to, to use a, a crude statement before the bodies were even cold. Um, people were already pitching their, their tents and getting ready for battle on, you know, gun control and, you know, transgender policies and, and all this sort of stuff. And it sickens me. I mean, for example, Shank Weger, I, I don't have the tweet in front of me, but he said something to the effect of uh, all the people who are taking the time to jump on transgenderism right now. Uh, don't you, doesn't this prove that you need to bully less? as if it was Christian bullying that caused somebody to go shoot up nine-year-olds. Um, so for me, it was utter disgust. And again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not absolving the right on this either because they was jumping immediately to, instead of pray for the families, um, pray for the school, pray for the church, pray for the, the community, all of that. And, um, and being concerned with the victim first as God's law was, concerned with the victim first um it was to all right let's get to our talking points let's have this out yeah um so there was a re real removal of the human element but also what was the most blatant i have ever seen as far as putting uh, like the the left the left likes the term victim blaming um when for example a girl wears basically no clothing and then gets raped uh, and we say, well, it wasn't the best idea to not wear clothing. Um, not saying that it's okay that you were raped, but it, you didn't help the circumstance at all. They'll say, well, you're victim blaming. Well, in this case, they absolutely are victim blaming. Um, they, they tried, there was people who were trying to say, well, there was sexual abuse at the school. And therefore, because of that, um, you know, she went and shot up nine-year-olds that had nothing to do with this and was considering other schools to shoot up. So it, it made no sense, but they, they instantly jumped to every reason they could come up with to make this as acceptable an act as they can, mm -hmm. which is bizarre. Yeah. Um, that 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 the, the culture war has slumped to a position where um, mass shootings are now on the table to be justified. Right. And well, there's, if you there's, think that's where it ends, it's not. There's a lot more to say on this. But what I want to do is I want to say it by responding to the things said in this uh, this clip. This is about a six minute click clip from uh, Joy Reid's show, you know, the, our favorite show here at Point of View. You know, we just watch it religiously every night. Um, Joy Reid had a quote-unquote um, um, expert, <laughs> Jim Wallace, on uh, expert in religion, you know, um, and, uh, and also a transgender, quote-unquote, because there's no such thing as transgender. That's not actually a thing. It's just a title. Um, and... Uh, and this is a man who grew his hair out long, has a ponytail, and calls himself a woman. 
and he does so because he was a uh, a male feminist and was accused of misogyny and because of that he just you know called himself a transgender and now you can't criticize him that's that's really the story behind this this dude his name is charles he's changed it now to charlotte um, and this is this is so they're going to have a discussion on this show on, on, on Joy Reid's show about this and about Christianity and about the, about the shooting and about how gun control is the only solution here. And so we're going to use it as our sort of launching pad to talk about this issue. So we're going to respond to this. Let me um, well, let, let's just go ahead and start at the beginning here and let's uh, let's let it play. Here is um, the first part of the clip from Joy Reid's show. I'm going to start with you, uh, Charlotte. Uh, you know, there it, there are statistics that show that violence against transgender people um, was already high. Two and a half times more likely to be victims of violence than cisgender people. From 2017 to 2021, the number of trans. Okay, so uh, here here's here's she's citing as Joy Reid is, is citing a study from EverywhereResearch.org, EverytownResearch.org. By the way, before in show prep. I, I went to everytownresearch.org and I could not find this study. I mean, I'm, I'm, sh I'm sure it's an actual study that they put out, but I could not find it anywhere to, in order to find out how they came to this conclusion. But I can tell you this, that it's almost definite, it's almost, I could tell you with almost 100% certainty that what they're including in these numbers are suicides, which are, um, which are, are often considered violent attacks, especially if you're looking at gun, uh, being killed with a gun, that's usually how someone commits suicide. So when you say 73% of transgender people who were killed by violent attacks were killed with a gun, what they're, they're including suicide. Now the suicide rate among trans, the transgender community is crazy high, just ridiculously high. And because they are killing themselves, they are then turning around and using that number as, look, you are, they are actually accusing Christian people because we disagree with the fundamental concept that it is even possible for a man to be a woman. We, 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 dis, we reject that on principle. And because we do, because we disagree very principally with, with like no, no doubt like about the facts behind it, because we disagree, they are accusing us of genocide. They've literally done this on many, many occasions. Any transgender you meet, you, you see them online, you're going to find, if you go through their posts, they're going to accuse Christian people and people who disagree with them of, of genocide because they are killing themselves because they're depressed over us not agreeing with them. It, there is no way that free speech can exist in a country where when you disagree with somebody, they kill themselves and blame you and you're called a murderer. You, you can't ever have free speech in a country where that exists. That, 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 that concept is completely foreign to America as a whole. And that's, what, that's what's being presented here in these, in these statistics. And, and to be yeah, clear, I, the theories the theories that try to explain the high suicide rate are absolutely <laughs> absurd um, because you would think that if that's the case, then statistics should bear out that as a culture becomes more accepting of transgenderism, that um, the suicide rate would go down and it's not the case. Um, America yeah. is the most accepting culture there has ever been for <laughs> transgenderism, uh, at least at this scale. And the suicide rate is still astronomically high, higher than Jews under uh, the Nazi, uh, you know, terror well, yeah, well, and, that they were under. And also, too, the, the, another point, and I know there's a lot of things that need to be said here, so excuse me for doing this. But another point is, if you go back in time, you know, they say, oh, oh, people have always been this way. This is just how people are. They, they would just hit it before. Well, I mean, we haven't become... Um, we haven't become more resistant to transgender, resistant to transgender in, in our society today. We've become less resistant to the idea, right? On a whole, as our society, and we have more suicides. Like this, the suicide rate has gone up drastically. So, how, why is that, right? If if this is just if this isn't a modern phenomenon, is it, this is how God has always made all people. You know, people have always been transgender, and they just hide it and and not affirming them makes them commit suicide. How come they haven't been committing suicide until now? Yeah, you look at you look at communities like the um, that that don't have transgenderism, 
in them, like um, Amish communities where the suicide rate is under 1%. And that argument kind of goes right out the window. Yeah. Um, you look at other 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 communities, it's, it's just a non-argument because it doesn't hold up against any sort of outside data. Yeah, 100%. This is a... a yeah, let's not let's call it what it is. A, a man who who convinces himself, or or he probably doesn't even convince himself. A man who calls himself a woman and then goes around living his life demanding that everyone else calls him a woman has has serious mental problems that will that almost always these kind of mental problems will result in danger to that individual if not suicide if not addressed and 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 help is sought for this individual right and we are we are in a society now where this is being encouraged this kind of mental delusion is being encouraged and the result is suicide of course it is you know that that that's just what happens when you when you encourage mental delusion you have mentally deluded people doing mental delude, mentally deluded things when, when the left brings up those um, those statistics, any serious, fair breakdown of those statistics can will always show that that's not tied to violence against trans people for being trans. Right. That's not that that never that's bears out in any way, shape, or form. It's always you know partners and 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 other th other environmental factors, and of course suicide rates. They all throw that in there and say, "Look, trans people are getting killed," but nobody is killing a quote trans per person for being trans. Nobody's doing that. You can't you can't tie that to it. Mm -hmm. It's it's just not happening. Yeah. And uh, since we're going there with things that you're not allowed to say, um, color me surprised that a lifestyle that is 100% out of the playbook of the culture of death leads to a higher rate of death. Shocker. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a good thing, but I'm saying you don't get to God is not mocked. <laughs> you don't get to mock God and then turn around and expect human flourishing. He created you. He designed you. You want to rebel against him, okay, fine, but he wrote the owner's manual. Right. He knows how it's supposed to work, and he knows what is going to prosperous life and what is going to lead to a shortened life. Yeah. All right, well, if we don't get playing with this, we'll never get through it. So let's let's, let's let her on a little bit further and see what uh, see what this uh, this dude with the ponytails response is to this. People murdered more than double, 73% um, have been killed with a gun. Right. Um, and yet we're now seeing the moral panic over trans folks shifted onto this Nashville massacre. That's right. Um, it seems that Republican Party, as usual, just can't seem to do basic math. Since January 1st, 2016, there have been 3,580 mass shootings in the United States based on the Gun Violence Archive. Less than five of those have been trans. So we're saying that 99.7% at least of the mass shooters have not been transgender. What, what the heck? What, what does that have to do with anything? That, that, is, a, that is a nonsense point that, that he made. I mean, that, that makes, makes no sense. Who cares? That you're trying to argue for gun control, and you're and this this was an example. Not this was not just an example of a trans person being a mass shooter. It's a trans person shooting Christians on purpose with a manifesto that says I'm going after Christians. Right? I mean, that's obviously we haven't read their manifesto, but we know what's in it. Come on, we're not, we're not idiots. Yeah, I mean, it, well, let's let's define mass shooting too. Mass shooting is if you kill more than two people. Um, there's a lot of shootings that it depends are depends on who's localized. defining it. Actually, yes, I think sometimes uh, it's, it's four. It's, it's usually yeah. four. Two, is the four is the normal two minus the gunman. Some people lower it. Yeah. So 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 again, it could even be lower. So yeah. you, you shoot up, you, you kill your family and yourself. That's that that's a mass shooting. Um, so uh, you look at the trans people that are involved in big mass shootings, like uh, the the Aberdeen, Maryland shooting. That that guy that guy was trans. Uh, Devin Erickson in the, in the Denver, Colorado shooting that was that was a trans identified person um obviously audrey hill in this one anderson lee aldrich in this the, the gay bar shooting from last year uh non-binary they them whatever um the bigger shootings that are a lot of people um you've got quite a few trans people that are showing up oh, and if you really want to gay bar shooting you really was a trans theme, or, or non-binary individual identified yeah. individual yeah 
Oh wow! Yeah, apparently they had an issue at the at the at the bar. I think with somebody that was in there. You know, the you know interrelational thing ended up you know shooting up a bar. But if you really want a trend, it's the mental health issue, and that's why that's why they want to kind of take the trans part out of it and try to focus on other things because this whole transgender thing is a mental health issue. If you look at the big mass shooters, James Holmes in the the, the Colorado theater shooting, Adam Lanz at Sandy Hook, um, the Uvalde shooter, these are people that had massive mental health issues, and that's what transgenderism is. It's just a mental health issue. Yeah, and Justin, and they want to stay away from that. Yeah, and J- Justin. <laughs> I, I, I'm just I'm getting this telepathy from you that you want to make a statement about the the line on the bottom transgender Americans under siege. Yeah, I've uh, I've been looking at that for a while now, waiting for the right time. But um, they just had this is this is in response to a school shooting where somebody went in. I, the last report I heard, and correct me if you've heard something more up to date, but was that she shot in. Uh, shot the lock off of a door and went in a side door um, literally sieging this school went around shot people and the headline is transgender americans under siege because the victim narrative must go on um it certainly can't say christians under siege they couldn't say that of course and here's the thing tell me what's what's really funny is that these people are about to argue whether we get to it in in this video or in the next but these people are about to argue from a quote unquote Christian perspective, it's the only people that are allowed to do this publicly. Because if you or I do this on MSNBC, if which we're never going to be on MSNBC, but if if we were and we started arguing from well God's law says or the Bible says, they're going to say, don't force your religion on me. But if a transgender identifying person then starts quoting the Bible, suddenly it's okay. It's as if Orthodox normal Christians are the ones in our society who are actually pretty much in every way under siege by popular society. Yeah. Um, It's all of the major institutions absolutely hate Christianity, real Christianity. There's an all out war on Christianity. And now it, it is, there is a push to make it acceptable to actually murder Christians. As long as you are a minority group and the Christians and the people you kill are Christians. Go for it. Well, well, and, and what you got to understand is it's not whether but which. It's not whether you're going to have a God of the system. It's which God is going to rule and what are his laws. Yeah. Are you going to have the God of the Bible and enforce his laws and his morality and his standards of justice and his standards of right and wrong? Or are you going to have the God of our desires and our sexual proclivities and the God of Demas, the people? Um, because... That God is very fickle, yeah. and um, that God might be okay with murder if you push him far enough. Yep, and our society chose that a long time ago, which, which God they're going for. So if we're going to ban someone, yeah. maybe we should ban people who are not transgender from, from owning weapons, if that's the logic. But I don't think that's what they're trying to say, is it? They're not trying to fix the problem. They're trying to weaponize it and exploit these senseless deaths. Three nine-year-olds who are brutally murdered just for their own bottom line in the ballot box. It's this. Three nine-year-olds were brutally murdered just for their own bottom line in the battle bo- ballot box. What he's saying here is, he, it's hard to say he, right? Because, you know, he's trying to present himself as an extremely ugly looking woman, but, but he's not, he's a man. Um, so the bottom line, he, he's saying that because we don't want to give up our First Amendment, because we won't, we won't cut the First Amendment out of the Constitution, we Second are... Sec- yes, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, First Amendment too, because really, free speech is that is in, is involved here too. Um, <laughs> but because we won't cut the Second Amendment out of the Constitution, um, we are we are the ones who killed those children. We killed them. And that's the that's the argument that this entire conversation is premised on. Disgusting. It's hypocritical. And by the way, as a Christian, I find it offensive that they would leverage Christ's teachings in such a heinous way against innocent people. Anyone want to jump in on that? No. I'm waiting for the further. Well, let's just put it this way. Uh, Let's play guess the argument. If you've been, if you've listened to any of this leftist Christian claims on gun control, masking, all of the vaccines, all of that. If you've heard any, any leftist argument concerning what the Christian way should be, guess what they're going to cite. Guess what the reasoning is. 
I'll give you I'll give you like five seconds. Guess the reasoning. Um, I don't know if it's right after or if it's a, if it's a minute or two later in the video. But um, this guy's going to give the the only quote a leftist ever knows about what Jesus said um, as the reasoning. See if you can guess what it is. And I'm going to um, I'm not going to be surprised. Put it that way. Yeah. And, and just before we do that. I want to re real quick re read the verse I referenced earlier. 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate. That's, that's, that's transgender. That's men who present themselves as women. Nor homosexuals, abusers of themselves of mankind. The, like this, this is included in a list of sins for which people are sent to hell. And this individual, this man has chosen this as a lifestyle and it says but me as a christian you are not living as a christian you have no you have no voice to speak for the for christianity you, you ha have denied the very premise of christianity that is that we must repent of our sins and turn to christ as the lord um, but yeah let me go ahead and jonathan did you i don't want to did you have something to say before we play again <laughs> Um, well, we're coming to coming time to the end. I mean, it's like Justin said before: the un, unequal weights and balances. Can you imagine if someone from the Christian community had killed, had went into a, a transgender area, and shot up people? How many MSNBC uh, shows do you think would bring on a Christian and say, "Well, we don't, we want to, we want to make sure people aren't going to go after the Christian community because of this"? Do you really think that would happen on CNN or yeah, NBC, CBS, any anywhere at all ever? That would there's no chance of that well, um what's what's hilarious well uh, hilarious not in the actually funny but in the you have to laugh or cry is that they're doing the exact same show they would do if that had happened mm -hmm. they're doing a show as yeah. if a christian just walked in transgender americans under siege you would think a yeah. christian just walked into a gay bar and shot up everybody that they thought was transgender that they're doing yeah. the show as if that's what happened yeah. The facts don't are irrelevant to how the narrative works. Because you never let a crisis go to waste. This is a crisis, so it has to be spun how in in the way that that a conflict furthers their their narrative. That that that's that's just what you do, and it doesn't matter if the actual facts of the crisis are the opposite of their narrative. Doesn't matter. It's a crisis. It's going to further our narrative. Period. And um, the narrative they're going to further is not it's it's surprising to me they're not only furthering the gun control narrative which which is just nonsense but it's a side point because they're also trying to further the you are committing violence against trans people narrative amid the exact opposite scenario that very clearly presented itself i apply just a little bit more here because the the clip is going to get to the response uh by uh by oh my goodness the name is escaping. I think it's James. What, oh man, Jim Jim Wallace, Jim Wallace, Jim, Jim and James. They're those the same thing, right? Um, <laughs> Jimothy. Yeah, Jimothy. Uh, this is uh, Jim Wallace, and uh, he's uh, supposedly you know going to speak for the Christians, and he, he's not. Let, let's just I'll just tell you that right up front. You know, uh, Jim Wallace, I'm, I'm so glad that you, you were available to talk today because there is this thing that's happening where it's kind of hard to avoid the, the sort of Christian element to it. There, there is a moral panic over LGBTQ folks in general, but trans folks in particular. Do you have any idea where that is coming from? It's kind of hard to avoid the Christian element to this. And there's a moral panic over LGBTQ in, in, in general. What do you mean a moral no, no, there's an actual physical panic that LGBTQ people are seeking to kill, or at least one of them, sought to kill Christians just because Christians say this is sin. You, you can't have freedom of religion if every time a Christian says this is, this is a sinful behavior, they are inciting violence against themselves and are, are, are to blame for any violence that anyone commits against them. You can't have freedom of speech if you cannot disagree with someone without them having the right then to kill you for it. I mean, <laughs> this is just the opposite of every freedom we have in this country. What Joy uh, Reid is though, attempting to say. To be honest, though, I'll, I'll swallow her description. Sure, moral panic over LGBT. Yes, I am panicked over the morality of our country because God has said he's destroyed countries over this. Read Leviticus 19. Um, if you get to the end, after he talks about you shall not lie with a man as you lie with a woman, um, it's an abomination. He says, 
I have driven out the other nations because of these very same things, because yeah. of their violation of these laws. So, yeah, I'm I'm panicked a little yeah. bit, not not in a frenzied, uh, no faith in God kind of way, but it is an urgent situation. The the depths of depravity we've sunk into. So, yeah, I'll accept it. Yeah. And Jonathan, do you notice that they changed like on this shot, they have a different bottom graphic and this one says religious right targets transgender Americans. Isn't that exactly opposite of what we just saw last week? Transgender, a transgender person targeted Christians and killed Christian children. And it's, it's not just that one instance. I mean, we can, we can talk about that one and that's the most significant one. Sure. But I mean, this is a mid, uh, cries for the transgender day of vengeance um, that was supposed to happen over this past weekend um, we have like we, we touched on it in the last episode um, this Jocelyn Barry the, the the press secretary for um, the governor in in Arizona um, posting pictures about saying this is what we do to transphobes and there's there's a there's a shirt that's out there that um, has a bunch of guns and the trans flag and saying um, something along the lines of this is this is what we're gonna do. Um, this is not something that should totally surprise us. Mm. Uh, they've been starting to say this and they're lashing out and they're not backing down when it happens and the media is supporting them. Yeah. So, well, and, and um, yeah, the, the target is, say, is out there, but it's definitely on the, on, on the Christians who honestly are the ones who are the, being the loving, the more loving party here to the transgender people. We don't, we don't oppose transgenderism because we hate the people what's best for these people is to um, accept reality and um, move towards a relationship with, with, with Jesus Christ and, and not stay in their delusion. Yeah. Yeah. And don't be fooled when they say your words are violence. This is why, Yeah. because if your words are, are the equivalent of violence, then it is appropriate to respond with violence. Yeah. If we are committing genocide, now, that may not every, if we are committing not genocide saying everybody, by saying you're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not saying that everyone who says that would try to justify this action, but I'm saying there is a group of people who use that phrase so that they can then turn around and justify violence. It is yeah. absolutely on purpose. Yeah, for sure. I mean, hey, look, if someone was really committing genocide against people, it would be right to go and stop them violently. So, yeah. and that, you, so using you see how that one term, lie builds upon another. Yeah. Yeah, because we we, we, oh, we yeah. mentioned last time about the um about those statistics are completely wrong. But if you just accept them, then you're you're led to that. Yeah. So, well, here's Jim Wallace. He's going to give us a brilliant brilliant uh, deduction here. B T Q are initials that all stand for somebody who's beloved of God, made in the image of God. Let's be clear about that. This is all a distraction from haste. That's what they're using this for distraction. Uh, Here's a moral fact. The leading cause of death now for our children and teenagers Abortion. are guns. Yeah. Leading cause. 100%. No. The, the, first of all, it's 100% without a doubt abortion. They, they, we don't even have to look it up. I don't even have to look it up because no, nothing could million. ever top that. Period. Secondly, I've never, ever, ever seen a gun kill anybody. Shooters kill people, and they do so with guns, but guns don't kill people, right? That it's just nonsense. Now, abortion is purposeful, an act meant to kill people. Guns, we are are actually used by most people who have guns to protect people. Like that's the major purpose in which for which guns exist. The purpose for which abortion exists is to kill children. The purpose for which we fight for guns is to defend people. You have completely different competing purposes here, and yet you're saying guns are the thing that's killing killing people. Okay. Well, yeah, but these are they're liberal leftists with guns that are killing Christian children, and they only killed the ones that weren't defended with guns. By the way, that there was another school that this that this that I want to say lady, but she certainly wasn't acting like a lady. Um, this this human trash was going to also attack and decided not to because she assessed the the threat and said there was too much security. So if we had had guns at the school, the children wouldn't have died. Is 
is the very clear very clearly the case. So guns are guns would have saved them, not guns killed them. A, a crazy mad person with a gun killed them, and if we had had at least one good guy with a gun, it would have saved them. And here's a moral conclusion from that moral fact: we're not protecting our children. That's right. If it were websites or poison food or some website, we would take care of it. Yeah. But a Republican says, it's nothing we can do. This is needed for our freedom. So what he's saying there is we will sacrifice our children for the sake of what he calls freedom. So let's you ask, stop there. what kind of freedom is this? Yeah. For whom, I'm going to let him finish his point. For whom, this is a question he has to ask. You said worship in your opening segment there. There was an ancient god called Moloch. Leviticus talks about Moloch, who was a god that children were sacrificed to in flames. And the Bible is very tough on Moloch. Guns are our new Moloch. Yes. All right, go. Okay, um, I'm going to direct people to um, Vody Bauckham was on a show called Cross Politic, gave an excellent response to this, but I'm going to summarize a little bit of it right here. Do you see what they just did? It, what he just did was make the argument that because I want freedom, I will sacrifice my children. That's what he's saying the reasoning is behind uh, Republicans who are arguing for guns. Um, now, certainly that's uh, not the case, but because I want freedom, I will sacrifice my children literally is the argument for abortion. Yeah, that is literally the argument they use for abortion because I don't want to be burdened financially because I don't want to have children at this time in my life. I want to go see the world. I want to advance in my job. I want to have more time to do my hobbies and my my passions because of freedom. I will literally quite literally sacrifice children 60 million plus in this country alone not to mention in the world alone that is quite literally the argument the molech of today molech is still around the spirit of molech it is abortion mm -hmm. and he just tried to take the argument it, 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 it was almost like he was doing it with a wink at the camera because he knows what he's doing like well, and it goes you to know that that's the argument people use for abortion. Yeah, I mean, he, and he had that little, sm you know, grin on his face. Well, Jonathan, well, well it, here's the question: Would would he make that argument to someone who who uh, is seeking an abortion? I guarantee you, he wouldn't. No. Well, and here's the thing: it goes to purpose, right? We hold on to our guns in order to defend our family from crazy individuals who want to kill them. They hold on to uh, they hold on to abortion in order for their own personal freedom, they don't mind killing children. Like that's literally, it, it, the, the actual purpose behind these, he's, mis, he's mischaracterizing the, those on the right who say we wanna keep our guns. It's not because we want liberty. It's because we want to be able to defend ourselves and our families. It's, it's about self-defense. That is really at the heart of the issue. And, and of course that we need the liberty to defend ourselves, but it's not about the liberty, it's about self-defense. Um, what, what do you think? Yeah. Uh, another thing that he said that I thought was pretty egregious until the whole Moloch thing just kind of, you know, knocked it out of the park. Yeah, Moloch was he there said, to kill children, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, he said, uh, he, he made the point about Republicans say there's nothing we can do. I have yet to hear a Republican say there is nothing we can do. Republicans are trying to focus on things like the mental health issue which is a big problem. Um, the Republicans are trying to, to focus on the fact, like like Justin had said, um, there was another school that was going to be targeted, but they were too secure. Well, why wasn't this school more secure? Why don't we have armed um, personnel in the schools to protect our children? We're on board with that. We want to protect our children. That's something we're okay with. We, 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 we absolutely do. Um, but yeah, yeah, M M Moloch was something where back in ancient days, they would give their children to this god and kill them so that they would have better crops or, you know, a better year or something, you know, some mystical thing like that. And it's exactly the same today. We're giving our children away to the god of self and saying, we want our freedom. Yeah.
and it's it's well, disgusting. Y- you can't you can't ever ever ever. And this is the thing that makes this show gives us so much content because the left in this country and those who hate Christianity are they they don't even try to be consistent. Like never, ever, 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 ever will you catch them accidentally being consistent. <laughs> like <laughs> that is never the case. It's just one issue to another. Find a way to twist it to to make to get people outraged against Christianity. It is a war on Christianity. There is a, there is a actual targeting of Christians, and this is becoming actually very a, a very literal thing. Yeah. Guns are the Moloch. We're sacrificing our children to Moloch when we could do easy, common sense things. Yeah. And I, I, you, you just triggered me to, to look. Jeff Charlotte tweeted a photo. I, I have to show this. This is a, a photo of a bullet at the center of a cross. Mm. That is sacrilege. Mm. That you have this worship of guns by people who are calling themselves Christians. Well, white Christian nationalists are white nationalists. And Christian gets thrown in there. Mm-hmm. So they're white more than Christian. And I'm just saying, let's be Christian yeah. more than white. Yeah. So it is false worship. It is the worship of Moloch. And it is really, uh, it's a heresy. Let's call it a heresy. White Christian nationalism, which is behind all this, is li- literally a biblical heresy. So you just make stuff up. Uh, and th- these are terms that just make up. White Christian nationalism. You just made this up. Like, Oh, and, and now they're going to, it's just like transphobia. You know, oh, you're a transphobe. Oh, you're a white Christian nationalist. Well, okay. I mean, you can call me whatever you want, but <laughs> I, having a bullet on a cross around your neck isn't sacrilege. You know, <laughs> that's, it's just, it's just silliness, right? It's not, it's not, it's not heresy. It's just silly. Yeah, I don't think this guy wants to get into an argument about literal heresy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's, he says, you know, white Christian nationalism is just white nationalism. Uh, there's nothing, and Christian just gets thrown on there. Yet he's sitting right next to this transgender guy um, who is supposed to be a Christian. That That's that's that, that's what you're describing right there. That's just a deluded person who calls themselves transgender, and Christian and Christianity is just thrown on there. And Jesus yeah, said and that. And he can't see this. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, Jesus said okay. that all power was given to him in heaven and earth. And then with all power that was given to him in heaven and earth, he told us to go into all nations and to teach them to observe the things that he told us. Right? He, like his message was repent, the kingdom of God is at hand. And here's this guy who supposedly, supposedly, I mean, it's very obvious he's not, but supposedly carrying on the message of Christ, sitting right next to someone who's calling himself a Christian, but is very clearly not repenting and submitting to Christ. Your job is to say, you're wrong. Please submit to Christ before it's too late. That's our, that's our entire reason for existence. And the devil is working hard to make sure society is saying, no, just shut up. Don't say anything. Don't you dare call people to repentance and faith in Christ. This is this yeah, is what's it, at really at play here. One last thing, uh, since you went there, because I'm so glad you did. Um, he's <laughs> he's going after Christian nationalism, the idea yeah. of Christianity being what is the guiding principles of the nation, more or less. You can get into the details a little bit more, but let's just say that Christianity as the the Bible as the framework giving us our our nation and our structure. Um, Jesus said to go into all the nations and disciple the nations and tell the nations to submit to Christ, which would look something like, hey, this is what you're supposed to do for justice. This is how you treat uh, justice. This is what God requires. This is what God says is right. This is what God says is wrong. And that's not just on an individual salvation level. That is for the nations to submit to Christ. So Christian to the nation, I would call that something like, Christian nationalism, something like that, um, would be the, what we also call the Great Commission. Yeah. And by the way, all Christians, white, black, purple, brown, whatever, green, everyone is supposed to do this. So the only word that's really out of place there is white. (laughs) That's the only word that makes no sense. And Charlotte, I mean, the thing is that there are real people that are being impacted. Your community is being impacted. And and I wonder if there is a way to disentangle 
people's sort of not understanding of trans folks, right? I think the T is the toughest one in the alphabet <laughs> soup, right? In the LGBTQ, the, the T understand. gets get right because people don't have an understanding. People, yeah. even if they're not mean or not angry, don't have an understanding. Is there a way to sort of disentangle people's not lack of understanding from this? Disentangle is not a word. I mean, it was <laughs> disentangle. All right, well, let's, let's let it go. This moral panic is now getting drag shows banned, even though that isn't trans. No, no, <laughs> and, and I think children are only unsafe at drag shows when a shooter shows up to kill them. That's right. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> so sexualizing children and, and dan men stripping down and dancing in front of children in an obviously sexual way is not dangerous. The only thing dangerous that you could do to a child is, is shoot them. Otherwise, you, they, they, there can't be anything bad for a child other than shooting them. Like everything else is good, you know, this is, this is, this really frustrates me because in our school district here in Ware, New Hampshire, we found in the middle school, um, we found books that discuss like and promote transgenderism, discuss the terrible, awful sex acts, just like terrible things. And we go to the school board and we say, this is wrong. And, and people are, are all outraged. How dare you? How dare you say this is wrong? This is dangerous to children. How can, how can our society, how do we even have to defend this? That this is dangerous. That, that you don't have to point a gun at, at a child to, to endanger them. And anyone want to answer my question? No, no one. Okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it. <laughs> sexualizing no. children is dangerous. You know why? I try to shut up because I know there's something we need to get to that I teased out. And if we don't get there, then okay, I just yeah, tease I'm sorry. Out I'm, I'm, I'm wasting a bunch of time. But you know what? It, it leads to all sorts of mental problems later in their life, besides the fact that it actually is, is physically abusive to them. But mentally, it's abusive to, to bring children to shows like this because it leads to all sorts of mental problems, which later will lead to ah, suicide. We know this for a fact. You guys keep quoting it to us all the time. And yet you're saying, but may, let your ch children be trans, even though the suicide rate is through the roof, but that's your fault. You know, this is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. Yeah, it, it, it just bears pointing out that, you know, for the past couple of years, this big push back against the transgenderism, especially against um, it, kids being exposed to it, has been led by the right, by conservative Christians. And um, we've done it in the name of children, you know, protecting children from, mm -hmm. you know, butchery and from, you know, mental problems. And now this one now now kids are actually being killed by a transgender person. And now they're saying, oh, well, you guys are the ones that are doing the Moloch thing and not protecting kids. Are you insane? Yeah. Are you kidding me? We've been going at this for years. You've got to be out of your mind. Yeah. Uh, but as Justin said, the piece yeah. resistance. Here we go. Right. That's where the threat is. I would challenge anyone just to get to know trans people. We are a vibrant, diverse community, as diverse as anyone else. You know, I'm from the great state of Texas. I serve in the military. I go to church every Sunday. My faith is very important to me. But God made me in her image. God made me transgender. Okay, we'll stop there because we're not going to have time after we talk about this. Oh, no, we have to. Else. We didn't get to what I needed to. Oh, is there more? Oh, all right, let me. There is. is right, when she talks about Michael Knowles. And. To see these people so cynically weaponize this and exploit these children's debts and their teachers' debts, it breaks my heart. I wonder what those families are thinking right now. What do you what do you mean, feel when you have somebody like Michael right Knowles say at CPAC, we need to eradicate transgenderism, and when somebody like Tucker Carlson says that transgender people are at war with Christians? I can't see Christ in their words. That's for damn sure. I can't see where the biblical principles of loving your neighbor and walking the walk with Christ that they can see. I, I can't see what they're seeing right now because that's not of Christ. It's not. Yeah. That's what I wanted to get to. All right. Well, just before you before you unload, Justin. Um, yeah. We already we already we already showed that transgenderism is literally not of Christ. First Corinthians six. We have it in the Old Testament. We have it in the New Testament. We have it all over. Like transgenderism is a sin for which God sends people. Up. That's what God says. You don't like it? Take it up with Him. You're gonna have to answer to Him one day. That's what God says. Okay, so don't tell me, well, I don't think that that's, that that's what Christ would teach. What about the Bible here? Okay, <laughs> all right. The, the Bible is, is sort of our, you know, that's how we know what Christ would teach, right? Go ahead, Jess. Well, um, if you're playing along with your card for leftist Christian Bible bingo, 
Um, it's always very easy because they know one verse, love your neighbor as yourself. And that's what I was saying in the last episode. Guess what they're going to point to? Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, that's what they argue for vaccines, for masks, for gun control. All of it is just love your neighbor as yourself, which this person absolutely should never say. Because Jesus didn't just say love your neighbor as yourself. Go and make it up as you as you wish. Love your neighbor as yourself. Look it up is a quote from Leviticus. That is, Jesus says that love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. On these hang all the law and the prophets. Yeah. In other words, love your neighbor as yourself is a summary of God's law, which has things against men putting on the garment of a woman and a woman dressing as a man, uh, homosexuality, bestiality, all of all of the sexual proclivities, things like that. All of the things that the left stands for, love your, your love your neighbor as yourself would would demand that you stand against don't let someone on the left argue for transgenderism homosexuality or whatever this other plethora of stuff they want to shove into it is under the guise of love your neighbor as yourself there is a definition of what jesus meant when he said love your neighbor as yourself mm -hmm. and i will stop there well and also too jonathan as i toss it over to you here um the god calls himself a man so <laughs> Aren't you yeah. misgendering God, Charlotte? We're, we're definitely um, going back to the lack of consistency because the or, whole uh, entire... Uh, it, he calls himself male. Uh, he uses male pronouns, right? I, I don't mean to say Correct. God calls himself a man. I, I, that was theologically Heresy. incorrect. <laughs> right. The one thing that the transgender movement likes to do is you must call me my preferred pronouns. If I am a male and I want to be called a female, you must refer to me as that and vice versa. And the they, thems and the yeah, who knows, they, they have so many different pronouns that aren't even really words anymore. Um, but it's all about the individual who wants to be called what they want to be called. And we have the Bible, God's very words, referring to himself as a he. And now we're going to say she in direct contradiction and violation of your own principles. Um, we, we've talked about the lack of, um, you know, consistency in everything that they do. And here we are again. Yeah. Um, it, it's well, check, check this out real the, quick. We, uh, uh, just maybe you can respond to this and, and say the thing that's on your mind here. Tyler O'Neill from Fox news reached out to, um, Charlotte, Charles Clymer, um, and, uh, said, I plan to write an op-ed responding to your recent remarks on MSNBC, and I wanted to see how you would explain your comment, God made me in her image, God made me transgender. How would you explain this claim? How would you respond to co concerns that you misgender God, who consistently presents himself as a father in the Old Testament? Uh, how would you say God made you transgender? His response is, do you have scientific proof that God is male? Or, or what evidence specifically would you offer that God is male? Well, you're the one who says that it's based on what your preferred pronouns. <laughs> and and this argument is so he terrible. actually posted this. Charlotte, he, Charles, he, like, he actually posted this on his Twitter as if it's some sort of dunk on Tyler O'Neill. Uh, Justin, what, what are your thoughts there as we run out of time here? Well, first of all, <laughs> give me access to you in a lab for about 30 minutes and I'll have scientific proof you're a male. Um, so I don't know if you want to go there. Um, secondly. No need a lab. <laughs> uh, no, 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 I'm, not, I'm not going there. But, but, but secondly, <laughs> here's the thing. I was actually going to say there is not biologic. God is not biologically male, but God has chosen to portray himself in how he relates to us as male, as father, as the uh, Christ is the husband. So uh, in the Trinity, you have the father, the son, the Holy Spirit. It's all male. And by the way, that is tied into how God structured how homes are supposed to be run and headship and all of that sort of stuff, which I don't have time to get into. But um, the fact is that it is the one time where it is preferred pronouns literally because god does not biologically have male or female but he presents himself to us because he's spirit he presents himself to us as the father as male yeah purposefully well i want to thank justin and jonathan for joining me today they aren't able to come on all the time but uh there's certainly so much more to be said here the the bottom line is we will stand with the bible period that that's what christians do and uh, if it comes down to it, we'll always side with God over men. And if you're going to kill us for it, go ahead and kill us. But 
it should be, we should notice as a society that this is unjust. This is not right. We'll see you next time right here on Point of View. <laughs>